But let me introduce myself real quick. Uh, my name is Isaac Jenkins. Uh, I was a syndicate at Arkansas. Graduated uh, in 1990. And in November of my senior year, I decided not to do business but to minister to fraternity guys. So I went in the ministry primarily to minister to frat, frat guys. I went to Auburn. I was there for four years. Met my wife there. She was a co. Then we came here. We started crew. And we've been here for 23 years. Uh, now I do a lot of consulting, helping campus ministers around the nation work with fraternity guys. And uh, about 10 years ago, I really felt like, I'm one of the Sigma Chi advisors here, I felt like we, we have really good rituals, but I feel like we don't do a really good job preparing you guys to be men and to really talk about what it looks like to be a man. So I developed this curriculum, and I've got five talks. I'm more than welcome to come back and do another talk later if you guys want me to do one. But this one's my primary important one. So what I'm going to do today for you guys is I'm going to really define what does it look like to be a man. Uh, let me beforehand just say it's really cool that, you know, the Beta, Sigma Chi, and Fidel, we all represent the Miami Triad. And I was looking at some of y'all's history today. You guys were around about 16 years before we were. Y'all's founding date was, was it 1829, I think, something like that? 1839. 1839, yeah, we're like 1855. But um, I like your uh, one, some of your core values of friendship, purpose, and fidelity. And I'm going to address purpose and fidelity some tonight in what I'm going to be talking about. But I'll start out by just saying this. I feel like we don't do a good job understanding what does it look like to be a man, so therefore we don't know how to live out being a man. Um, I, th I think a lot of times we define manhood, like for example, I've killed over 100 deer, I've killed at least 80 turkeys, uh, I can prove it in court of law that I've got three kids because I've had sex three times. Well, my, my oldest son is a freshman here, you may have met Zach Jenkins, he lives in the fifth floor Stockard. And um, uh, I'm, if I'm cashed out on my rental property here in Oxford, I'd probably walk, walk away with two or three million. So sometimes, th is that how we define manhood? I got money, um, I've been successful, um, I've killed a lot of wild animals. I mean, that's great and all, but I know a lot of guys that have done more than that and less than that than, than me, but they're not good fathers, they're not good husbands, they're not men. So well, I'm going to propose a definition for you, and then I'm going to talk to you guys and challenge you to really think about some of the things I'm going to say. But what if a true man is a man who rejects passivity, he accepts responsibility, he leads courageously, and they invest in younger men? Okay? He rejects passivity, he accepts responsibility for the way he treats women, his pledge brothers in this chapter, he leads courageously in this chapter and on this campus, and then one day he invests in younger men. Let's talk about it at the beginning. First of all, um, Augustine, who was a great theologian back in the 300s, said, your natural tendency as men is to be passive. And you have to overcome passivity to be doing something good. All right? A recent study came out and said that you guys, your culture has actually graduated from childhood and now you're living boyhood from right now to your mid to late 20s. But if you don't truly accept responsibility for being a beta one day and, and leading this chapter, this chapter will never go where the officers and myself wanted to go. So let's talk about, first of all, taking responsibility for women. Um, the culture has changed a lot, and therefore, guys, things are not on equal footing. Um, I've been in the Greek system now for 31 years, and times have changed. You are not just responsible for the way you carry yourself on this campus, but for also the way you carry your date. Uh, two examples last year. Uh, one is a guy took out a girl on campus. Uh, they consented to go home. They consented to have sex. And the girl afterwards said, you know what? I didn't really consent to have sex with you. And $10,000 later, he was expelled. <coughs> because it's your word against her word. And if she doesn't like the way you're treating her... Uh, the way you're treating her, she can actually have your future completely destroyed. Another guy was a law student here, um, graduated in law. As a as, at the same time he's graduating in law, he met a girl here in Oxford. They consented to go home on, in a taxi, <coughs> consented to have sex, according to him. And afterwards, she decided, you know what? I didn't consent. Uh, so now he has a felony. Even though he passed the bar, he'll never be able to practice law. Guys, the type of girl you're spending time with, the, the type of girl you're hanging out with, you really need to evaluate, is that the type of girl you really want to be with? Because the type of girl you're dating is going to be most likely the type of girl you marry. It's not this two lives myth that I hang out with this one type of girl, I spend time with her, and I somehow end up with this great girl over here. That's, that's really a myth. There was a guy at Auburn. He was dating a girl. Obviously, they were shacking up pretty regularly. 
and he must have broken it off and made her mad. One day she just decided to call the police and say, hey, this guy molested me. They arrested him. He was in class. He had, he, not only did he not molest her, according to his story, but he was in class. They arrested him. They put him on trial, wouldn't let him defend himself, and they expelled him. And when you're expelled from one campus, that means you can't go to the other campuses in your state. So guys, I would really challenge you to think about the type of women you're hanging out with. Let me ask you this. What type of man do you want to become down the road? Okay? I'm 49 years old, so I'm 25, 26 years down the road from you guys. What type of man do you want to become? You cannot become what you are not becoming. Okay, you cannot become what you are not becoming. I would challenge you over Thanksgiving break when you're in a duck blind like I'm going to be or you're in a deer stand like I know I'm going to be in. Really evaluate this semester and think about what type of pledge were you? What type of pledge were you to women? But also, what type of pledge brother were you to your pledge brothers? I want to challenge you to take responsibility for each other. I'll give you some examples. Um, the Fidel, a Fidel at one time had had too much to drink. And he told his, one of his pledge brothers, hey man, give me my keys to my, my, my Bronco. And they were like, no way man, you've had too much. And he kept bugging them and bugging them. And then finally they were like, the hell, you? here's your keys. And I passed his Bronco, flipped out here on the highway, and he was dead. Guys, if you've got a pledge brother, you, part of being a brother one day is to, to be honest with your brothers. And if you've got a brother that's been drinking too much, man, give him a ride, call him a taxi, take care of him. Take responsibility for each other. Um, I've got this big print I wish I would have brought that's in my office. Uh, and it's called the Band of Brothers, and it's the 101st Airborne. And I, I paid $350 for that print. Now it's worth well over $2,500. One day, easily, it'll be go for $10,000 because it's got all the original signatures of the guys who fought for the 101st Airborne. But you guys, you've gone through a lot together so far. I pledged for over six months. I lived in the house as a pledge. Okay, it sucked to be me for six months. But you know what? I'm tight with my blood brothers. We're still tight to this day. You guys are becoming a band of brothers. Look out for each other. Let me give you another example. Um, so I love being a campus minister on this campus. I love having access and getting to know so many of you. But, but one love-hate relationship I have is when I get a phone call that one of you guys have died. Uh, that a lot of you guys have died over the 23 years that I've been here at, well, in this Greek system. And just two years ago, I got a phone call from the KAs, and an active had drank himself to death mixed with uh, drugs. And, um, you know, it was, it was tough enough to address the pledge class, but then the house mom asked me to address the entire chapter on alcohol abuse. Okay, that's not something I like to talk about. I want to be the guy that I'm your friend, I'm your big brother, or I'm like a father figure, but I don't want to talk about the elephant in the room. So I did a lot of thinking about it, and here's what I shared with the entire KA chapter, which is the biggest chapter in the nation with KAs, and I understand you guys are almost the biggest beta chapter in the nation. Here's what I told the guys. So recently my real estate portfolio has gotten close to $3 million, so I had to up my insurance. So this big insurance company called me and they said, we're going to ask you some questions. If we're going to insure you, basically if something happens to you, we're going to be giving your wife probably about $3 million. We're going to ask you some tough questions. It's not that they didn't like me. It's not that they were, you know, they had this agenda. But their agenda was simply, am I living a safe lifestyle? So they started off with, um, do you drink? How much do you drink? Do you smoke? How much do you smoke? Do you own your own plane? Do you fly? Do you jump out of planes? And the list went on. They probably asked me 20 different questions. It wasn't that they, they were trying to get into my business. They just wanted to see, do I live an at-risk lifestyle? It's fascinating that they asked me those questions because a week after that, that interview by them, I met a man over here by the links. I mean, I'm sorry, the hub. I own the property across the street. He had to buy a piece of property for me, and he was dead a week later because his private plane crashed. I was also friends with all three of those couples that went down in that plane, that private plane crash this fall. It was really hard to go through losing friends. My point is, it's okay to own your plane, but what happens if you, you fly every day and you don't get it serviced? You see, guys, er, have, enjoy life, but enjoy it in moderation. Be careful and watch each other. And listen, if you've got a pledge brother that's getting out of line in something, man, have the balls. Care enough about him to get in his face and say, dude, I care about you. And don't care if he's going to cuss you, but say, dude, I feel like you're living your life out of control. Okay? So take responsibility for the way that you treat women. Take responsibility for each other. And then ultimately, think about taking responsibility for this chapter. What is it going to look like for you to give back to this chapter one day? I decided to do something my senior year that very few actives did in my chapter. I decided to move back in the house. 
You know, I told you I lived in the house my freshman year, and it sucked for six and a half months because I was the first door on the left when you walked down the hallway. And if actors wanted to come see me, they could any time. Those were back in the good old days. When they knocked on your door, you better open immediately or they take a chainsaw and cut your door in half. I mean, they do all kinds of fun things to get into your room. But I moved back into my house my senior year because I cared so much about my chapter. I would encourage you guys to be careful your senior year and don't get so caught up in your resume and a girlfriend, but instead give back to Beta. Run for an office. Uh, make this, this chapter the best chapter on campus. Um, eat all your meals here. Move back in the house. Give back to this chapter. Remember, and then here's my question is, are you thinking about what type of man you want to become, and are you setting your focus now to become that type of man? Because I want you to be the type of man that the younger men are going to respect in this house. And when the younger men are struggling, they'll come to you with questions. They'll look out for you. The guys are the womanizers and the alcoholics. I'll be honest, nobody's going to come up and ask those guys for advice. When they're struggling, they don't go ask those guys for advice. But they'll come up and ask you for advice if you care. One of your, your key words uh, a while ago, and I'm going to give you a little advice for the chapter, um, was purpose. I knew a wealthy Walmart executive that was a multimillionaire, and he met with a pastor friend of mine, and he said, he said, can you help me? I've been very successful, but I've done nothing of significance. In other words, for significance is purpose. Guys, you can be very su successful one day and done nothing to have purpose in this chapter. I want to challenge you. What does it look like to get, have purpose in this chapter? It's to give back. It's to come around. It's one day when you're alumni to, to, to volunteer time like I do for Sigma Chi and these other fraternities. That's showing purpose. All right, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share just a few principles, and then I'll close out here in a minute, moment, of some things, some advice I will give you that we've learned from Sigma Chi. I told you I've been an advisor for four years, and Sigma Chi is the longest, we're the biggest chapter, Sigma Chi chapter in the nation, and we're the longest running chapter in the nation of almost 150 years here at Ole Miss, but we almost got kicked off two times in the last three years. So I'm going to give you, you guys some advice to help you stay on this campus for another 100 years. Um, first, first point I have is we've had to really cultivate a strong alumni uh, help. You, and you know what? I look, you guys have a very actually strong, as a nation, you've got the highest grade point, and you have actually one of the strongest alumni involvements. Every chapter has an average of eight alumni that are involved in the chapter. I think that's great. Hats off to that. Keep that up. Keep your alumni really involved because when you get in trouble, which you will one day, we got in trouble. Um, one time for some guys carrying some beer into the front of our house. You can't carry beer in the house now. You, and then we got in trouble again because we're a dry campus. We had a cooler inside the house that was open and a policeman walked in. That's called intent to distribute to minors. And for those two simple strikes, we almost got kicked off campus. So guys, you got to know the rules. Um, you've got to understand, man, what are the things that can hurt us or help us? But if we did not have some really good lawyers that were civic guys in Jackson who wrote a really good appeal, we would have been gone off campus. All right. Another uh, point I would give you is cultivate friendships with people at the university. When we got in trouble last spring, I don't know if you guys are familiar with this, but we had we we allowed a Sigma Chi with very low character to have a mic at our Derby Day deal, and he said some very inappropriate things about women. And nowadays, you can say zero inappropriate things about women. I mean, that's always been wrong, but nowadays it's it's politically wrong. And a girl went home and wrote a Facebook page about it, and we almost got kicked off campus for that. Well, if we didn't have some really good cultivation, cultivated relationships with some of the, the uh, high guys at the university, get to know the, the chancellor, vice chancellor, or some of those guys, the dean. Let them be your friends. Invite them to come over and eat. So when you go through tough times, they'll say, you know what, that one person made a mistake, but that's not beta. I know beta. That's, that, that was a bad egg. And the one thing I've been trying to get the university to, to understand is, if we have one bad egg, let's don't kick out 200 guys for the one bad guy. Let's put that guy on alumni status. Um, also, I would challenge you guys, and you may already be doing a good job with this, but to seek out friendships with nationals or headquarters and even invite them to come down on a regular basis. Um, I think sometimes there's a real disconnect between nationals or headquarters and us, the local chapter. Um, sometimes there's jealousy of the bigger chapters because a lot of the headquarters guys came out of really small chapters and they're jealous of you guys and they're going to look for a way to kind of take you out. So the more you can have friendships with them, invite them to come be a part of initiation, uh, invite them to come in down here during the semester and do a workshop. I'm telling you guys, that's paid huge dividends for us with our chapter. 
Um, and then finally, and when you guys are, uh, uh, hopefully all of you, or um, initiated one day, um, I think you need to do a good job and we all need to do a better job policing our social media. Social media can kill you in two ways. It can kill your chapter and it can kill your future when you interview for a job. You see, if you come interview for me, you can write all the fancy stuff down on a sheet of paper you want, but I'm going to get online and I'm going to find out who you're really like. Because who you really are is what you're like when nobody's looking or your social media. So I challenge you guys to think about the things I've just said. I'm going to put this talk that I just gave you on GreekLegacy.org. Okay, GreekLegacy.org. This talk will be up there in about two weeks, and you guys can uh, go back on, online and look at it. You can click on my Manhood tab. But, man, guys, I want you to succeed. This chapter is doing really well right now, and I want it to be the best beta chapter in the nation.